Welcome to A Power to Rise 2, session 1 of this new role-playing game. I'm Ryan the GM, it's the 30th of May 2020, and here are the players. I'm Alan, I'm playing Dewey, the level 1 bard, Dragonborn Race. Uh, I will be a trickster, a flatterer, um, hopefully a, a fun character that will keep things interesting and pull the team together. Next. Is it me? Yeah, it's you. You're next. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, my name's Jills, and I am playing Baksh, and I am a druid wood elf. Um, the personality traits I've got is that if someone's in trouble, I'm ready to lend a hand. I've got a strong sense of fair play. Um, I respect people. Um, I'll protect those that can't protect themselves um, and hopefully not have much trouble trusting my allies, but that might happen. <laughs> <Here's hoping. laughs> Hi. Hello, I'm Stuart. I play Mardrin, a dwarf <laughs> wizard who's read every book in the world. So if you want to know anything, I know it. Uh, right, cool. Hi, I'm Angela. I will be playing Colin's Elk and I am a half orc. I will bring to the game the fact that I am very committed to the people I care about and I will give them all my, my time, effort, anything in fact apart from my money, which I'm not easily parted with. And I will haggle to get the best deal possible, no matter what the situation is. Excellent. You're also a half orc fighter. Yes. Barry. My name is Barry. I'll be playing Giver the Mad. He is a Dragonborn Ranger mm -hmm. who is constantly picking things up and playing with them. Um, more than likely, I'm going to blow my hands off uh, picking up something I shouldn't have. Uh, and I'll more than likely die in battle. I mean,. If you're gonna die, battle's the way to go, to be fair, especially in like a D&D game. So, here we are. Um, now, once we get into the game a bit, depending on how well the frequency of this new game goes, we'll probably talk about things like goals or like character kind of moments and stuff at the start, but we don't have any of that yet. That'll be like a session two, etc. thing that we'll deal with. And we'll like, everybody will discuss like what they think they want their character or the group to be up to next in the story. Um, but at this point we're just going to jump straight in. So, because of the group that we've got here as well, uh, Murdrin is a kind of long time apprentice studying under one of the kind of oldest wizards in the kind of the world that we've got that we that we live in. Uh, his name is Grandelf because I am original with names. So. Grand Elf is named this because he is the oldest elf known. Um, so feel free to make notes of things you care about. Uh, but yeah, he is the oldest elf in the world. Um, nobody knows what age he is. Uh, they just know he's kind of been around forever. Um, kind of does what he can to make sure people and like the surrounding like towns and villages and cities and whatnot like kind of do well. Um, essentially, big old wizard in a big castle. Um, as I said, Murdrin is one of the many people that are uh, like kind of desperate to study under this guy because he's the guy that knows everything. Um, as for that, he's asked you all uh, to attend his castle um, so that he can kind of send you on some kind of a quest and yeah. So, as for that, you will have all worked together previously, because that just makes things moving forward slowly. Obviously, we can discuss more of the specifics of these details when it feels relevant. For example, if we're in a situation and you think, well, if we'd done something like this in the past, wouldn't that have been a nice thing to have done? Maybe that's how we met, in fact. So you can do all that like, as we go. I don't mind like retroactive like character building that way. Um, it's probably a bit easier once we've got a couple of sessions by as well. It'd be a bit more kind of natural at that point. Um, as for that though, use of a 
got word. So I think maybe use like for the most part, the four of you that isn't Murdran will be in the local tavern, which is the town surrounding where the castle's built up. The castle's up in a a big mountain perch. Um, and at the foot of that mountain there's a big town built just into the side of it. And that's pretty much wherever they go is first when they're travelling to go see the wizard. And we have Murdran who's wandered his way down the side of the mountain uh, to get to this tavern where you are all kind of sat. As I said, you have long since known each other. Um, I don't know uh, what age everyone's characters are. I um, Have you wrote those details down? No. What age do you want to be? Right, that's a thing, right? Because obviously you all have slightly <coughs> different lifespans. Um, like I'm sure dwarfs can go up to like 500, I think. I, I think it's like give or take a couple well, hundred. Is it 250? Yeah, I was yeah. thinking 100-ish, but... Yeah, yeah. I guess that's fine. Where you can find the lifespan on a character sheet, or...? So, the, the information won't be on the character sheet, but yeah, see that compendium tab I mentioned before? At the side, at the mm -hmm. top right? If you click on that and then type in your race, it'll give you information on your race. So, for example, if you type in, like, half, for example, and then look for half orc, click on that, and then if you scroll down, there'll be details like age. So they're usually, they hit maturity around, or adulthood, sorry, around 14, and they rarely live longer than 75. And that's for half orcs. Um, so what age do you think Colin's elk would be? Thinking. And she's had a bit of a life already, 40. I think, hasn't she? So yeah. Yeah, you think 43. I'll stick with on age. Okay. So to do that then, on your character sheet, uh, if you okay. open that up and then if you click on bio, which is next to the big red core button, mm -hmm. click on that, that should move you to the bio and then at the top, there you go. So you've actually got an age on there already. Right, yeah. But you can update that if I'll you want. With... No, I'll stick with 40, that's fine. 40, yep, perfect. Uh, what about everybody else? Everybody else got an age on their sheet or do they need to decide that now? Uh, yeah, I'm a hun I am 100 years young. What was that we missed the, the numbers part there? So we've got 100, but then that's where it cut out. 117 years young. Okay, okay, perfect. Yep, quite young for an elf. And uh, mm -hmm. who else knows the age? Uh, I'm uh, 34. Okay. Yep. Look <laughs> <laughs> <Not> at you. <laughs> I've put myself down 42. Okay, what age were you? That's the, when you say you put yourself down to 42 or just down as 42? As 42. Right, okay, cool. I was like, I was up at 7,000 before. <laughs> yeah, let's have a wee look at Dragonborn. Yeah, so they live between like, let's see, young Dragonborn grow quickly. They walk hours after hatching, attain the size and development of a 10 year old child by the age of three and reach adulthood by 15, and they live to be around 80. So, there you go, there's some complex Dragonborn information for both of you. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. Right, and so you said you were about 150? 111. One, one, one. One, one, one. 111, yeah. Okay, perfect. So we got a bunch of varying ages then. Good, good. Uh, so, yeah, essentially, like, Mirdrin, the information you've been given is literally put together a team of people you trust that you know can solve abstract problems, right? And that's what you've been kind of told by your your mentor, Grand Elf. Okay, so yeah. that's that's information you've got. And you've you've already sent off the messages to get everybody to assemble it's in this tavern. It's got Sudoku for us to do. <laughs> this is it, yeah, right? <laughs> what a disclaimer. <laughs> you just get there and it's just some wallpapering. That was what session one was. Um, but yeah, so I think the scene is um, you four sat at a table in a tavern um, and we'll have Murdrin kind of like walk in. As he walks into the, the tavern, what's the conversation at the table at that point in time? Is it like a story of something you used to do? Is it like who travelled together um, to get to where you are? Was MD local to the area or people from far away? Like what's the what's the conversation at the table as he walks in? Um, 
conversation stick ordered food. <laughs> uh, it was meant to be chicken. Mm-hmm. The chicken somehow mood. An air tree restaurant. Now we're um, discussing uh, how many steps to get to the lot after. I'm losing some of you, Barry, the audio. Yeah, me too. And none see it into the microphone. Yeah. Aye, so we're discussing the uh, the chicken that mood. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what you walk into then, Mordrin, as you approach the table, as they're complaining about a very rare cooked chicken. That <laughs> mood? <laughs> yeah. Mood, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. I'm looking for adventurers to help me with a complex problem. And keep in mind, you all know each other. You asked them to meet you here. Um, yeah, yeah, right, cool. Right. Actually, well, yeah, but right. Is the boss going to turn up as well to tell us? Or what? No, because oh. you have to take them to him. Alright, okay, cool. Back right. up the steps. Yep. <laughs> well, guess. Nobody's too fond of eating the dubious chicken, so we may as well go now and see Master. He's got a complex problem we're, we're going to uh, need to look into. How many steps are we talking here? Uh, uh, like your Fitbit will have a fit. Yeah, half the about. amount that I'll be taking. <laughs> 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 I'm a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> As he like pulls himself up each step. Yeah. <laughs> They're not quite that small. Um, you're about what, maybe like what, four foot or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, about that, I think. I'm sure I did height. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, four ten. Four, no, it was four four or something like that. If it's anywhere, it'll be on the bio page, cool. yeah, if it was anywhere. But I don't um, see it, so I wrote it down. Oh, well. Um, but yeah. So, in to get any replies uh, for their you know, potential long lost friend, Murdrin? Mischief sounds like a plan, let's put them. Let me back my bagpipes. <laughs> I love the idea that makes all the, yeah. the air escaping the bagpipes noises as you try and cram it into a bag of some kind, and then everybody just gives you some weird looks like, are we sure it was the chicken that moved and not the bagpipes? Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, anything he's going to do in the uh, tavern before he's leave, or even in the town before he's leave. Well, I'm certainly not paying the bill. Um, <laughs> if ordered chicken and it moved. So... I would like to steal this fantastic flagon. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you just want to like walk out very um, in a glass for a nonchalant, pub. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, tell you what, then give me a sleight of hand check. So if you go to your character sheet. You'll find sleight of hand on the skills list. Mm. <laughs> if you click that, we'll see how if you can swipe it unnoticed, and then there we go. Look at that! Not a single problem. Basically, it's on the table one moment, and as you like step up to get out of the booth and kind of obscure it from vision when you walk away, it's somehow not on the table anymore. And oh well. Ooh. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's also. Like the first roll of the game. Hey! <laughs> I'll just type this in there. Can I put it down as a treasure? Uh, I mean, if you wish, yeah, add it to your character sheet, why not? Um... <coughs> or neat. <laughs> Two G's flagging. Say that again, sorry? Is it two G's in flagon? Hey, I think it's just one. Cool. I have no idea, but I think it's just one. Um, who knows such things, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. So, the... If you basically just don't want to pay, like you all just make your way out of the tavern. You probably get some grumbles as people come over and like, you know, the, probably the kind of waiting staff, like 
who actually delivered the food to, he's probably walk over and start muttering about how they, yeah. you know, this will come out of their radios, etc. Blah blah blah. Yeah. It, was yeah, all, it was obviously a Witherspoons, right? Because um, of how poorly mm -hmm. treated the staff are. Um, oh, I feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, this this was this was your decisions, right? <laughs> I know, but I didn't. I did say I wasn't going to pay for the food. I didn't say I wasn't going to tip the waitress. <laughs> I would use my skills then to negotiate because I don't part with my money easily. So I'll argue the point. I don't know. To standard. <laughs> that is actually just like real life. <laughs> <laughs> and my. In my defence, but it is part of my character. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to play role play bingo for all the key phrases, right? <laughs> Can I steal this bingo? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, as you are standing outside the the tavern, then I and we've got Batch and Colin Zilk having this conversation. Like, what's the result in that conversation? Does Batch like just let it go, or do you go back in? What? No, I think I think we need to go back in. Um, what do you think, Collins? I think we need to go back in. No, in we don't. No, no. <laughs> I don't part with my money when I've not had the service that I wanted. No, but we had the service. It just wasn't nice. Exactly. So we didn't eat the food, so we didn't have the service. Um, no. Mm, do you think we should just leave like a wee coin for the waitress? For no, cause... I don't part with my money. No. <laughs> <laughs> no tip. No. <laughs> Would your dragons think? What's the majority rule? I've I've just taken a very ornate flag and <laughs> I I can go back in if you want. I chance. don't think you want to go back in because you've already <laughs> used your flight of hand and you... they might see the flagon and take it back off you. So I hand the flagon to one of you for safekeeping to go back in and sort it out? But for all going back in to sort it out? No, nah, I'll stand outside. I don't want no <laughs> part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Come and stand there and go, nah. <laughs> Is this going to be like? Is this going to be like when we played Star Trek and we're going to be stuck standing out the pub? I uh -huh. see. <laughs> what the funny <laughs> thing is, we're going off to fight dragons or whatever else, and we're worried about a bar tab. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Save the, the world. And every tip helps. Uh huh. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. yeah. So I've been there. So I'm going to just go in and speak nice. Yeah, but I've been there as well. I used uh, to work in a pub. And if I didn't give the people a service, then I didn't expect to get a tip. So oh, I perfectly understood where they were coming from. Have I got money? Uh, so on your character sheet, right? See if you look in the like the bottom of the sheet. It's in like the middle at the bottom. Uh, also, let me just make sure. I can where all your it. items are. Yeah. So I'll paste a wee image in, and I can see it. Like ten gold pieces I've got. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. likely. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So that ten gold pieces also is so one gold piece is like ten silver, okay, and one silver is like ten copper, okay. And Between the gold and the silver, there's another one there. Ignore that. Yeah, just genuinely ignore that. It's it doesn't I'm count. Sorry, because you kind of broke up there when I was asking. It's okay. So you've got ten gold, right? Mm -hmm. And one gold. Right, so I'll put this in here. So one GP, right, one gold piece, that equals ten silver pieces, right? And one silver piece equals ten copper pieces. And we ignore the the mystery okay. coin ne next to it. The thing is as well, we don't know what we're going to come up against. So we don't know if we would need to bribe someone. We don't know if we'll need the money for something else. So my point is, why waste the money if we don't? The final know boss is the waiter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a, it's entirely up to you how you you feel about that. Um, like, well, look, keep in mind it's your money, and you could just go in on your own. You don't like you could let them all walk off, and then you could just maybe try and you know head back honest, yourself. I, I, because <laughs> I don't like I, I don't like leaving enemies wherever you go, and see see for all, for all we know, for all we know, this waitress could actually. 
be living somewhere in the woods that we'll end up having to walk through and it could be hard ground and she could shoot us or something. We don't know we don't know what the ramifications are of mm -hmm. not being not being fair and, and decent to somebody who wasn't their fault that the food was shit. They still done a good job. Mm -hmm. Um, has got a wee starving family to feed and all that. Child benefits not come through. Tax credits hasn't come through. <laughs> There's <laughs> one rule about food. You, you never some piss money. off somebody who gives you food. Yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> so here's... I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go in. I, I believe in fair play. Um, and and. Um, yeah. So what I'll do is um, I'll give you some prices of what things normally cost to give you an idea of what your yeah, money's yeah. worth, right? So this yeah. again for everybody. So for a mug of ale, it's four copper pieces, right? So that's a mug of ale, four copper pieces. Keep in mind that each silver coin you have is worth ten copper coin. Right. And each gold coin you have, which you've got ten, is worth ten silver coins. So you have like a lot of copper. Now, in this world, because let's face it, every game I'm probably likely to run ever from now on will have the magic money thing where if you've got a pile of 10 copper, you can tap it three times in a stack and it'll become one silver coin magically because that's how you know money is real. Um, this is not a D&D &D thing, this is a me thing and it's just much more convenient um, because money has a weight and you'd rather carry the least amount of coins possible. So... There you have it. So you can turn, like, I know you've got 10 gold coins physically in, like, your purse in this game, but you could turn one of them into 10 silver coins magically just by tapping the coin three times on the a surface. Okie dokie. Um, and then likewise, you could turn that into copper as well. Now, for a, as I said, for a gallon of ale, it's two silver pieces. For, like, a loaf of bread, it's two copper pieces. Um, for a, a meal, for a so you've got squalid, poor, modest, comfortable, wealthy, and aristocratic, and this is a meal. For an aristocratic level meal, it's two gold pieces. For a squalid meal, it's three copper pieces, and then for like a comfortable meal, it's five silver pieces. So there's the, roughly the scale of a, you know, what your money can get you. So are you all eating by the way? Forty years. Mhm. Mm so we've all got this yeah, all ordered. Yeah. But I'm just one. This is more just so as Jill can work out what, like, what level of a uh, payment um, she wants to go in and leave. And can I change some of my gold coins then into silver? Yeah. yeah. So see if you, yeah, like so if you just wanted to make that nine gold coins and you would have ten silver coins. Do I just go in and type it in? Yeah, it's just a text field. Yeah. It's what it is. And the it's one working. above, the one directly above gold, is the one we ignore. So it's the silver oh. triangle that you want to go to. It says it in the tiniest writing to the left hand side of those coins, yeah. like yeah. TP, CP, so etc. That would be silver pieces. Exactly. Um, but if you want to just put in nine silver pieces, you could then just put in ten copper pieces as well if you wanted. It's ideal. Right, okay, I've done that. Perfect. Right, yeah. ideal. And then. Um, at least that way you've got some change, as it were. Um, so yeah, so you, you, you head back in after like everybody else has left. Um, you heading up to the the kind of the bar where you would have ordered. Yeah, and I'm going to give her. Um, I think two copper pieces. Out. I think that would be possible. That's the price of a pint, isn't it? That's uh, four four copper pieces is a mug of ale. Right, I'm going to give her four copper. Two seconds, what I'll do is on Discord in the rules chat at the very top of this channel, I'll dump this. So you should hear a ping. I, and underneath Miss Misc Text Channels, 5e rules. There should be an image oh, now. Oh yeah. There we go. That should be that'll always be there if you need that. Great. Thank you. No, no worries. It's just it's nice to know like values of stuff in the yeah. world because obviously you have oh. no basis for that. Exactly. Yeah, go. I'm I'm gonna use four of my copper pieces and I'm gonna yeah um yeah. 
copper pieces. And you're, you're kind of handing that straight to her. Now, are you trying to do this in a way that like her boss doesn't see that, or? Yeah. Do you want to do maybe sleight of hand as well? Uh, do I have sleight of hand? Yes. Every, yeah. So all the skills, every day has all the skills. It's just people have varying right. levels of like you know skill at those. Yeah. Yeah. How do I, how do so I you do just click. You, you just you click on just the name. Done it. Oh, Alan's done it. I just tapped it. Oh no, it comes up four. Um, I'll I tapped it at the same time. I'm also time gonna as you. go and fix something on your sheet so that I can. Yeah, I tapped something at the same time as Alan tapped on my sheet. It's okay. uh, box at the top middle. You want it to be at normal. That's so. okay. No, it, it didn't exist on the sheet. That was why. Uh, it was obviously made before that setting was implemented. So. Jill, can you do it on your character sheet on the, your interface, or does it need to be Alan? I, I, just, I just click the tick box that says slight hand. No, nope, you don't tick that. You tick the word slight. You press the word slight hand. You don't touch the tick boxes. All oh, right, no, it doesn't work. So Alan will make you do it. Yes, it has. So he's no. done it. Oh, I... no, it did. Right. It worked. We got a bunch of things. We got a slight of hand. We got two stealths, <laughs> and we got another slight of hand. Well, I'm going to take so the first one just out niceness out. Right. Okay. It's Where because seeing the tablet, they're so close together. <laughs> that, that's okay. I'm, I expect that to come up. And as Stu has rightly guessed, I am always usually going to take the first roll that seems, you know, genuine. Oh. So that would because be... it's just too good to not take a roll. It's also not like... that. It's just it is the first roll you made. Yeah. So, like, oh, see, I... if, for example, see if you did a stealth roll and you gave me those two stealth checks, I'd be taking the seventeen, not the nineteen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because of the first one that came through. So the, uh, the first thing that comes through of the thing I asked for is the one I'm likely to take. Just like with the 4 and the 17 that uh, Dewey rolled for you, uh, the 4 would be what I took if you didn't have advantage. Remember we spoke about advantage and disadvantage? Yeah. But yeah. I'll let you know if that comes up. But a 22 is pretty good, so you managed to like pammer some money. Um, she kind of um, like she smiles politely, um, but then like that smile vanishes really, really quickly, as if she's like you know, don't look you know too pleased that she's got you know, some extra cash, and she uh -huh. like, continues furiously wiping the countertop of all the kind of you know knobbly wood that it's made of, um, mm -hmm. with her, her kind of her rag, and then she uh, is less likely to spit in your ear next time. So. Yeah, like and the thing is, <laughs> you do stand out a little bit, right? Because um, just in terms of. Uh, showing every day, like not everybody looks like that that walks into this place, right? Um, <laughs> Face tattoos. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Green glowy hands as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's in one hand while she hands the money over in the other. Right. <laughs> everybody always looks at the shiny green hand. Um, but yeah, I think that went pretty well. So. And like Woodland Paul Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible image. <laughs> So you do you head back outside then after that to kind of catch up to everybody? Because did everybody yeah. wait on her or did everybody just head on? I don't know. I ran outside. We just headed on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we just don't know where you're going. I waited to see yet. So right, we're just going to go up this way. If you just wait till everyone's here. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, but yes, he's all kind of reconvene outside uh, the withered spoon, and. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hey, taverns need names too, you know. Um, just like people that, you know, are put out of work need wages. Eh? Witherspoons. Anyway. Um, oh. But yeah, so, Mirdan, do you hide on then, or do you take them on a tour of the town, or what happens? Uh, good point. Is, is there anything anybody needs before we go see... Uh, Brandel. No, I didn't give anything. Right, head on straight to yeah, yeah. the tower or whatever it is here. Yeah. yeah, so it's probably good. It's a good walk up, right? Like it's definitely in. There's been like stairs and stuff carved into the stone to make it much easier to get up the mountain. But it was also maybe because he built the house there before the staircase was built because they wanted peace and quiet, right? And then, as the kind of years and years and years went on. He realised that being a bit more useful might have been more helpful, you know, having loads of people admire you and you know look up to you and yeah respect you. Kind of gets to his ego a bit after a while. But yeah, um, you said up all these stairs. It's probably been quite a quite a trek. I I'd say it's definitely well over an hour of a climb, 
right, to get up, and from the, the, the base of the town. But once you get to the top, I yeah, like there's a whole bunch of like kind of um, servant staff, so it's almost like getting to like a hotel in a way, and um, with how many people are kind of like bustling around. Uh, there's lots of people that look like they're scholars as well, various races as well. Not it's not all like say for example humans or whatever. Um, all different races are are here kind of bustling around doing their own thing. So it's a very very busy um, place to be, quite frankly. I. Uh, but yeah, so Mirjana, are you taking them anywhere specific in here, or just as quick as you can getting to, to Grand Elf? Uh, yeah, just as quick as I can. Mm-hmm. Nobody here would be, nobody's a mage, so nobody would be interested in where they work and so on, so yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, you head up, I make it yourself known that you've come back with the, the people that Grand Elf requested, you kind of let his like his like direct assistant. Oi, Diffy, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> like, Diffy, his direct assistant there, yeah. <laughs> so Diffy, um, <laughs> Willem Diffy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Yeah, close enough. Willem Diffy. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm super original with these names. Uh, direct assistant to the uh, to Grand Elf. Just I'm making my own notes here. But yeah, so he kind of looks you up and down, and obviously this guy's an elf as well, right? Willem Duffy, and he gives you that kind of that look as like maybe you've had this before, Mergen, but he's obviously clearly of the opinion that elven magic's better than dwarven magic, right? Even though there's literally no difference between the two, magic's magic, right? It's a uh, race agnostic, so confused with me a dwarf doing elven magic then but yeah yeah right being um, taught by an elf but anyway yeah yeah and maybe that's like maybe petty jealousy right because you've been asked to go get people to go do something and he hasn't right despite his years of service uh, to grand elf uh, another small detail as well is nobody knows what grand elf's name is like grand elf's clearly a title it's not his actual name it's just it's been so long since he's ever had to say it it's just gone now um, but yeah, so he reluctantly kind of like looks over everybody, and like as these are all standing there, this guy clearly is just like one look judged everybody, right? Um, and kind of rolled his eyes and walked up to the doors and says, "Yes, Grand Elf will see you now." Uh, and then motions you to like get the door yourself, essentially. Yeah. Uh... Walk in, lead the party in. Walk. Yep. As he's going, I Willem then closes the, like the doors. Behind, obviously the last person through the door, and you hear the big kathunk of the doors just clicking shut. I, and yeah, you're in like a massive. It looks like a like a study, a big huge study. I, you've got a man kind of like half hunched over a desk full of scrolls. Uh, the walls are basically just bookshelves with the gladders up them. Um, there's random instruments lying around. There's a strange buzzing noise coming from somewhere that you're not quite sure, but doesn't seem to be bugging him, so who knows. Um, Is he getting pleasure from this buzzing? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you'd maybe have to ask him, or maybe roll an insight <laughs> check. Um, maybe a sleight of hand as well? No. Um, but yeah, so... He's there, and then like there's like a, you just can see him from the back, and as he's hunched over as if he's like reading something on the the table uh, as he's standing with his back to the group, and then he kind of like waves a hand behind him, and he says, "Willem, is that the people?" Yes, that's his name. Good, 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 good. And then he he kind of stands up. He's quite a tall guy. He's maybe about like six five, and he uh, stands up straight and kind of turns round and he. Uh, puts his hand out and kind of summons a staff to his hand that he then immediately leans on and he goes down to about maybe maybe 5-5 five five at that point with his hunch and uh, he just starts like slowly walking towards everybody so it's like step step clack of the staff on the ground step step clack uh, as he painfully shuffles over to the group and he, he looks up at everybody well and then he just says nothing. And they break the silence. 
What is it we can do for you, Grand Elf? Don't interrupt. One. And he, uh, he's, he's still like looking over you. Um, well, kinda, everybody does. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he kind of turns round uh, to everybody else. Oh, we've lost, we've lost people already. Are we getting them back? Slightly. Actually, it'll be the usual time out. Ah, maybe not. I should be though. Hello again. Welcome back. Hello. Cool. Oh. Hello. 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 Yep. Muting problems. Can You're you... muted at the moment. I yeah. Think. You are muted. Oh, sorry. I there dropped the Ah, yeah. <laughs> you were wondering what had happened. It's like you went deafened, and then you, yep, it's okay. You're yeah. back with us. It's fine. So, so yeah. So as I said, Grand Elf hobbles over to the group, and then as I said, it says to you like, don't interrupt, even though he wasn't speaking. And then he, he kind of turns to everyone and goes, "So well, why are you all in my study?" And he's like clearly addressing like the four mm -hmm. strangers. Because you sent somebody to come and get us. I think I'd know if I sent someone to come get you. This is my place of thinking, and you just walk in here unannounced and uninvited. I've invited them here uh, on your request. You also probably have the letter that has him, like, having signed it, saying, go get yeah. me these people. Cool. <laughs> um, here you go, Grand Elf. Have a look at that. As he picks it up, he, like, puts his hand out to the side and just pulls glasses out of the air and puts them on his face. And then so sure he goes... Oh, you know, right enough. And he's like slowly just reading the paper and then like turns it over and seems to be reading the back of it that has nothing written on it. And then uh, he kind of like rolls it up and he says, well, you should go get these people right away and hands it back to you. Okay. Turn around. Turn around again. Here we go. I've br brought these people here. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I knew you were the right person to send. No. And uh, as I said, being the older self has downsides, right? The downsides might be that memory comes and goes. Um, but yeah, so he kind of like, his eyes seem to like be focusing in the light. And yeah, he looks at everything, he like takes the glasses off and just puts them back in that part of the air that seemed to hide them. And uh, he says, The children you see. And that's all he says. Just kind of what stops. children? Exactly. But more importantly, whose children? Well, that's a question that's often asked, but yes, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been taking the children. Ah. That's bad. Yes. It's not good. Now. In the woods. And it kind of emotions to like a part of the library as if he's like pointing in a direction, but sure, it could have been any direction. I think. There's a woman of the wilds, and he kind of like he, he whispers out to the side of his mouth like a witch, but he doesn't as if he's whispering that to somebody you can't see next to him. I believe either she knows who is responsible or is responsible for these missing children. You should go and question her. Where the boats in the woods would we find this witch? And he says, hmm. Oh, which witch? Which witch indeed? <laughs> and he like points to the sky. And then he, he starts tapping on his lip and he's like, I have a map. And he turns back to like the desk full of scrolls. And he just sees them slowly like. Like somebody that really has no idea what this stuff is slowly unfolds these scrolls and looks at them and just moves them to the side and keeps looking through the big pile and he's like, aha! Like presses it out over the desk and says, come round, come round. And he like motions to everybody to like get closer. Yeah, do that, get close. Stand mm -hmm. in a wee box or something. <laughs> With everybody else? Yep, getting close to here. Yeah, everybody gathering round. Yeah, the... we're happy. Good, good. Yep. And uh, yeah, and it's just like a map of the local area. I don't have one, so this is where we're using our imagination. And uh, you can clearly see like his castle in like some little hills. Um, 
and there's like a little kind of marker of the town at the foot of that. And there's like a big kind of woods. Quite a lot of forests around here. Um, but one of them's marked Broken Bow Glade. And he starts tapping on that kind of like part of the kind of little cartoony trees on his map. And he starts tapping on it with like a big long finger. And uh, he says, Old Osmok lives down here. And he just points to like a part where there's like a river. I shall go there, find the woman, and ideally find the whereabouts of these children. He kind of just starts nodding to himself. Is Osmok the name of the witch? And he like puts a finger up. Wilds woman. Starts tapping Wilds. his nose. As if that's somehow an answer. I'm hoping it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's um, vague. Yeah. Do you have any pushing features? Well, if she's the one we're looking for, she'll have a lot of children that don't belong to her. <laughs> you should ask the children, perhaps. Which children? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured that one out as well. Oh, well, not the women. Children. Children. So the children should know which which belong to which. And he looks really confused. And he starts tapping on his lip again. He's like, "We may have, we may have asked the wrong people, Willem." Thinking we have, you know, already. But yeah. And he just starts nodding. He's like, but there's there's no time to find new people. As you can see, my job here is really tough. <laughs> 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 now, don't delay. You report back as soon as you can. Save as many of the children as possible. And you can just you know, goes back to like looking at the map really intently. Do we know how many children we're looking for? Okay, it turns around. Ah, Mirdrin, you have brought the adventurers. Good. <laughs> oh, yes, no. you have heard of the missing children, I see. The reports come in every day. At first I thought it was just children's mischief. And he waves a hand mysteriously in the air. But, hmm, that's been a few can weeks we, now. Can we see the reports? He looks around, really like suddenly, like, can you? Did I leave them out? Do you have the reports for us to look at? How else would I have known about them? And he kind of like shuffles around the other side of his desk and goes into like a drawer that like rattles a few times before it opens. And he pulls out a bunch of like, like really varying quality pieces of parchment, like dumps them on the desk and he says, these are the reports from the people who have lost or misplaced their children. Would you mind if we read them? Please? And he kind of just hands them to you. Okay, we're reading them. What what information's on them? Well, what is it you'd like to know? Is it the better question? Um, how many children are there in the in the accounts? So there's probably about there is probably about twenty letters here. Okay. Yep. Are the children all of different races, or are they stealing one race of children and one class of children? Yes. So. Question. Based on the naming scheme, purely, because it doesn't say, I am a human woman who lost her son. I am, because mm -hmm. people don't really talk that way, obviously. Um, but for the most part, none of them seems to be, like, there's no dwarven surnames. There's no dragonborn surnames. There's no half-orc clan's names, right? It's, it all seems to be, you know, human, as far as you can tell, names. 
do all of the children go missing at a certain time? Like, is it during the day they go missing or at night? So it seems to vary on the, the reports. Some people notice at different times, right? Like if their kids go off and play in the woods or if their kids are like off, I don't know, chopping wood down or hunting or fishing or something, right? And then they, they're not heard from like for like a day. And then... They are all near the woods when it happens. That's... Uh, like just like yeah like from the surrounding kind of like villages and towns yeah and obviously people got come and go into the woods a lot for again like hunting right yeah um so yeah nothing there's not like they're all local ish right and they've been over the last two weeks give or take and yeah like at first the first like kind of the earliest kind of dated letter i guess if there is a date to them um it's somebody that wrote in saying, you know, it was concerned about their kid having run from run away from home. Uh, and then there's like a follow up letter being like, no, please, like, can can you do something? Can you ma like find them magically? Because most people's answer is, can the wizard fix it? Right. Um, because, yeah, it turns out when you have a powerful wizard, you tend to rely on them a bit. So is it a, is it a common gender and age group? Uh, there seems to be uh, how to um, less than sixteen years old, I guess. All of them seem to be okay. So, like sixteen or younger. And is it mixed genders? Yeah, doesn't seem to be any particular. There's like reports from like missing boys and girls, and okay. anything in between. So yeah, it's not okay. a. And, they, a specific... and they're all under sixteen, right? And they prepubescent. I mean, those details aren't <laughs> supplied, it's, uh, as I said. Considering this is like, you know, fantasy and medieval-esque, right? It's, you know, you're probably a man when you hit 14 as a human kid, right? So... But if you're saying that they're under 16... I said, it seems so... to be, six, like, nobody seems older than 16, yeah. Like, so, some uh, of the letters might only say, my teenage son has ran off please find him, right? It might not say here is the medical records of this kid. These are all like, you know, lucky if somebody, like a lot of the, these letters might look identical handwriting because it was probably the one person that could write locally that what's sent them. The, what's the... Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. What was that? Right, so questions, what have we got? What uh, is... What's the... Is, is there a common class? Of to, like, is it all working class, or are there any um, rich kids in it? Is there? Yeah, just... like so the, there's not really many rich people around here besides like the wizard's castle. He did kind of build it to be like in the middle of nowhere, um, but there is occasionally like somebody that like you might recognize names from like the local cobbler or something, right? Um, but like, yeah, it doesn't seem like specific to the people that live in the outskirts, like the farmers or mm -hmm. anything. But okay. like their kids, like the cobbler's like daughter, might have played with the farmer's son, right? Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's oh, oh yeah, right. Um, but that's the thing. Like a lot of the people might have waited to have wrote in because a sending letters is expensive. Writing is not a trait every single person has, and also like people do like travel obviously for a bit and run off and you know. But there are kids like as you know, as young as five have been taken, right? Like actual like children, like babies almost have been taken, right? Um, but there are no like newborns or anything taken. Right. Okay. It does seem to be a kid that was able to wander off, right? Right. Been snatched. But whether or not that's true or not, who knows? Because some people like are convinced their kid was in their bed, right? before they went to sleep and then they woke up and they were gone so as i said there's varying reports of these there there, so what's that Alan? is there any reoccurring items in the letters so location that happened more than once or an instance that happened more than once no like there's nothing no obvious pattern to it there like it just seems to have been like a bunch of random people's kids seem to have like gone missing or have been taken, right? Has there been any evidence of the kids um, where they've disappeared? So, for example, like a shoe or uh, something, any, any evidence? 
any violent abduction kind of thing evidence or something like that. But yeah. That. I, there's one letter that says the window was open, right? Um, but like these windows would be like wooden shutters, right? Um, not necessarily glass. So, yeah. That's it. But that's only like maybe one letter. I think we need to start heading and just, yeah, try and find this woman. But you've got the rough directions of where like her, you know, hut in the woods should be, right? Um, can... Alright, so here's a question. Who thinks they would have either met or known or heard of old Osmok, right? Because it's like literally a wild woman's just like a, somebody that does like unorthodox magic in the woods, right? It's quite possible I'd have been to her to get supplies or something like so that. So you specifically know because you've been trained by Grand Elf, you'd have been told don't mess with wild women. Right. So sadly you're the one person that probably wouldn't be. Um, but we do have like rangers and druids in the party. Uh, right, we've yep. got bards who probably don't have standards, right? So, apparently, no not. offense. <laughs> do we? Um, <laughs> right, and I think um, I do believe like Collins Elk was also like an outlander, like who traveled. As far as no, so you're you're like a guild. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so like, who thinks they may or may not have heard of us? I think. I'm Oh, right, okay, so let's yeah. start with that, right? So we'll start with, uh, with Guyver first, right? So you said you think you've met her? Yeah. Right, okay. Because so... I'm a, a ranger, and mm -hmm. a ranger in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, I went to her for supplies, because I won't carry enough in my backpack. Ah, for like um, so, so much of a journey, yeah. And yeah, you'd have seen smoke, and you'd have went to like her hut and stuff. So yeah, you probably have like a rough idea of like where she might be then, assuming she hasn't moved on. Um, that might have been like maybe 10 or so years ago, right enough. Um, but yeah, you definitely think maybe this is the same woman I met years ago. Yeah. She's definitely. just a crazy old woman in the wood. Then they did a bar. <laughs> um, and like, I... as for like you getting supplies and stuff for her, like, she would have asked you to do something random, like go out and cut wood and stuff like that. Um, but then, like, it seemed just so that you had done something. It wasn't necessarily that you would have brought it back or that she even needed it, right? It was just she gave you tasks to do that seemed mundane, right? Like stuff like that. Um, or like, you know, weed the garden. Uh, and then when that had happened, she would have made you up some supplies and sent you on your way, right? Um, she was looking for a specific herb. It could only be found in the opposite side of the, the river. Mm -hmm. And she hadn't a boat to cross, so I went and got the help for her. There you go. See, I do you want to give us a survival roll, right? And you can do this with advantage, right? Uh, because of your outlander nature, and we'll we'll see how well the last ten years of memory treat you. Just let me know when that's coming. <laughs> so advantage is near the top middle. Uh, click that, it'll turn red. Yeah. And then click, what survival. was the history? Survival. Said? Survival, sorry, survival. Just middle-ish left. Far left, you've got a row of stuff. Acrobatics, animal handling, arcana. It's in. There we go, look at that. I didn't Whoa. even need the advantage. So yeah, you have a... A fairly solid idea of how to get there and like how to get there fairly quickly by avoiding a lot of like problems, right? Um, yeah. So you've got quite a good idea. Luckily, being an outlander, you'd have probably got there regardless of uh, poor rules, which is nice. I am um, the benefit of being an outlander. But yeah, how is it you relay that to the group? Okay, so. I've been to see this woman before, I've done a task for her um, about 10 years ago. I know roughly where she was then. Um, she might have moved on since then, but I know where to go. 
And like when you say that as well, like oh I've worked like I've met her before and worked with her, like you hear like Grandelf tut and go oh, and just shake his head like a fussy old man. Um I ignore him. Mm -hmm. I give him a look to go whatever. And then I turn back round to the group, I say, right, are we going? Yeah, before he turns you into a frog or something would be a good idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and like he just like kind of goes back to his like, is staring at the map and just starts like waving you off. You know? <laughs> Remember, find the children, and then uh, yeah. like waves his hand at you. We'll be back with the children. See, bye. And uh, anyone else doing anything of a uh, disruption? Shall I put it in the office before you leave, or uh, <laughs> he's all happy to follow like. Giver and Mordrin out of the room. No, just follow. Yeah. Hey, goodbye and thank you for the information. He kind of like, he smiles um, at you I, very kind of warmly I, back mm -hmm. and he kind of like waves slightly more like daintily at you instead of the kind of gesture and get out of my office wave that he gave every day. Um, mm -hmm. And then kind of looks back down at his, uh, his work yeah. in front of him. Green is his favourite colour, so you're lucky there. <laughs> <laughs> good job, I've got glowing green hands. <laughs> <laughs> or at least maybe today he remembers green's his favourite colour, yeah. <laughs> the butterfly tickle. Yep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I guess just head right back down the mountain and head off, or picking up anything yeah. in town, or like what's the what's the plan before you set off? What do we need for the trek? Have we got everything for it? So I would ask Giver, what do you remember of this this crazy woman that lives out in the woods? I mean, I think literally what we said, right? He'd went and got her like like she needed a bath. She was happy to help him by giving him stuff as long as he got an herb like a herb for her. And it was across <laughs> the river and she didn't want to get wet, so hence the no baths thing. Before we head out, <laughs> right, some right, rations. Okay. Right, two seconds to. What was that, guys? Hold on. Alan squished a bug on his top to. and it's <laughs> given me the because he's got a squished. <laughs> okay, sorry. Stu. <laughs> yeah, make sure everybody's got at least a couple of rations, at least, right, just in case. Rations and a uh, couple of rations, a couple of water, at least. If we don't, then we need to go and get some. Everybody well, should have yeah, a set of ten rations. I'm actually just going to make sure. I've only got should... two rations, by the nope, way. Nope, that's the weight. Right, I've only got one ration. You'll have ten. It just puts it in as one, and I don't know why. But if you actually look up the backpack that you took, um, whatever pack, dungeon pack, explorer pack, or whatever it was, it will have yeah, said ten. One. It'll. Cool. It should be ten. Put it that way. So if it says one, right. make so sure it says ten. It. Yes. The the two stays the same, because one of mm -hmm. them is weight two, but like yeah, it's a left hand one. Yeah, that's water like skins ten as well. Nope, would be heavy. You, I think you only get one of those. Those right. are always right, sadly. Um, Weird, because you need two water is skins that per day. Talking about so yeah, it's like if you look in your character sheet, I've fixed yours for you, right? So on yours, My it'll say ten rations and two, and the two is the weight. And this is like where the money is in that kind of box. That's your equipment. Can you see it? I did notice you gave me the scale mail. I wasn't it. So no, we had that conversation. Um, I know we had the com I never actually fixed everybody else's gold because of that though, so I'm just going to go do that now, actually. Um, I turn rashes into a seed, sorry, thank you. Ah, no worries. Let me just edit everybody's gold because Stu got a free thing. Um, and I meant to do this and I just totally forgot. Um, But for everybody else, it's, it's a pretty good thing. Every day is just, that isn't Stu, just got 50 gold. Hey! Uh, I need to type in the right number, that would help. Uh, there we go, perfect. Um, just, I'd meant to go through that with character gen about the 
still got a character needing medium armor, but you don't get to start with it. So I was like, I don't mind if you want to start with something a wee bit extra. Like the whole point is you're meant to have been people in this world for a bit. Um, and then because of how long character gen had taken for the rest of us, I was like, I don't have time to like go back and like figure out what unique specific item ever they might have had. Well, like you don't really get much better than the starting equipment, except maybe slightly, slightly better armor. But now you've all got fifty gold, which is what the cost of his armor would be extra. So you've all got a lot more money. Excellent. And that's maybe your your pool of wealth you have gained through your previous missions that you've done um, in the world. Obviously, the dwarf spent it on some shiny scale mail. But yes, so did you? You've all got like more than enough rations to make the trip anyway and obviously if you need to find a river on the way you can refill like your water skins and whatnot if you have to um but before luckily, we get to the mm -hmm. town oh sorry when you go now i was just gonna say you've got two outlanders with you because i think both um angela and barry are outlanders i think that's your backgrounds um oh, sorry i keep thinking you're an outlander you're not angela you're a no he's there the guild artisan um, that's what you are Right, it's okay. Um, yeah. It's a. Uh, do we have two Outlanders, or did I just make this up? I think we only have the one. Yeah, but because Barry's got Outlander, I'm just gonna dump this in. Where is it? Yeah, I'm just gonna pop this into chat. For the most part, you shouldn't really need to worry about like rations if there is something to hunt, right? So if the land could have provided food you should always be fine. Unless you start, like, travelling with more people. Make sense? Yep, and I'm a good cook, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm, think. Mm -hmm. Yep, you took that. Before we get that. to the town, yep. um, before we get to the town, does Giver remember what the herbs was that the woman was looking for and she couldn't get, so that in case we need to use them as a bargaining tool? We've got them before we go and meet her. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I think you could really remember what like what herb it was and like where it roughly grew, right? I think that survival roll was good enough for that. It's a rare herb that only grew east side of the river because the sun hit it at a certain. And do we need to pass that way to get to where she is? So, or is it a diversion? From where she is, she lives at like this side of the river. So you'll get to hers before you would ever need to cross the river. But it's not okay. to say you couldn't get to hers, cross the river and come back, right? Or even go to her and say, by the way, do you need more of that herb? Because, you know, we want to snoop around, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's all completely possible, yep. Uh, no, we'll just. What do you want to call the herb, Barry? You can name that. It's from your background, so. Um, hard to find him. Hi. Can you just call it like water crest if, you, if you struggle? Hi. Uh, <laughs> I was a uh, COVID, COVID stars. Oh god. Okay then, so it's... Not a healthy herb then. Covid <laughs> SARS. Yeah, one word, yep, Covid SARS. Um, the Covid SARS uh, flower. There we go. That's what she needed. Perfect. Funny enough, there was a plague not long after that. <laughs> yeah, weird, right? Weird that. <laughs> um, something about a bat, maybe? <laughs> But yeah. I think she seems to be making soup. But... Yeah, who knows, you know. So it wasn't a bat, it was a dragon after all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is it. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, so I guess you will head down, unless you've got anything else you want to discuss before you head down to the town. Um, anybody wanting to pick up anything specific from town? No, I'm good. No. Happy as is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think with the survival role that you got, Barry, to be honest, I think that's perfectly fine. Guyver is able to guide the group um, fairly well. It probably does take, like, maybe, like, at least a day, right, 
Um, so you're like you're walking a bit. It's getting late. Um, you just could push on and kind of get there in the earlier hours of the morning, or you just could make camp and head in in the actual morning, like in a, a reasonable time. What would you prefer to do as a group? Ah, it's an old woman. We're as well given her her sleep. Camp near a spy. Everybody happy with I, that? Yeah. How's the area? How's the area? Sorry, yeah, it's just like just forest, right? Yeah. How safe is the area? I mean, how safe is a forest in a fantasy land where yeah. you have green glowing hands? I, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> it, like you can obviously it's like take watch order and stuff like that for your like when you make camp and stuff like you will all, be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you, it would be assumed based on if I was ever in a game, I would never let it not happen. Um, but yeah, always have like somebody staying up and waking the next person and everybody rotating their sleep. So you end up sleeping or taking longer than the eight hours for a long rest, but it means that you all get a long rest and somebody's always keeping an eye. Out, so ends up being more like a 10 or 12 hour rest but it's still uh, the safest way to do that in dangerous territory um, but yeah so as you start setting up a uh, camp then um, as you are like getting closer like you are like within a couple of hours of uh, getting to this woman's place uh, is there any particular conversations that spark up during the the setting up of camp or does everybody just settle in do you discuss your approach? <laughs> uh, yeah. Are we going to go get the help? Uh, maybe just as a present? I think maybe we make something to eat first and then discuss it after we've had something to eat. So, Outlander, go get some food. Yep, so Guyver can go off and go hunt something. We um, don't want any moon chicken, apparently. <laughs> moon chicken. <laughs> It sounds like moon uh, chicken. I <laughs> you want moon chicken? That sounds yeah. quite nice. Like. What's that, uh, Bax? I, I can cook up what you find. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, Guyver, you can go off if you want to go hunting and you can come back with some uh, some game and such. Uh, if you're happy yeah. enough to go do that or you just tell them, no, go get your own food. Like. No, I'll go and do it just to prove a point I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I like the idea that maybe this is a thing you do every time there's a new quest. And it was like, we have quested before, we know this. We know you can feed us. Like, I kind of like that kind of group dynamic. And, uh, yeah, what was it you bring back? What did you hunt? I found a deer, or it was a foal. I managed mm -hmm. to find a foal. Perfect. Bambi, you found Bambi. <laughs> Yeah, I killed Bambi. Very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess, are we going to get some preparation for Bambi then? Yeah? Yep. So, yep. on your character sheet then, right? So, normally you'd have to roll survival, Barry, if you didn't have the Outlander thing, right? But luckily, because you have that, you get to skip that step, which is nice. Um... Now, for you, back, see at the left-hand side of your character sheet, see if you look at where your gold is, and you look to the left and down, there's a box that says tools, and there you've got cook's utensils, right? Just, Just see where I'm... Cook's utensils. I'll do it is I can in our Discord chat. I'll just post a wee picture. Mm -hmm. Right, so you'll click on Cook's Utensils and it'll ask you what stat to roll it with, right? I'm going to say it's probably Wisdom for cooking, since Medicine is also like Wisdom and so is a, you know, a handful of other stuff. Uh huh. So you can roll with your wisdom to cook, like the best way to have cooked this. Sure. So cook's utensils, click on that, it should pop up with, you know, what stat, pick wisdom, and then that should right, come up into the chat. It doesn't 
come up about 45 times. It's okay. We'll see what happens. And we'll see how well the <laughs> the full tastes. And wisdom and submit. And we'll just wait. There that worked? Go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you prefer it reasonably well. Yeah. Hey, you, you will. <laughs> Five step, but fairly edible. <laughs> <laughs> better, than the, better than the cow chicken you've had yes. earlier. <laughs> Damn moon chicken. <laughs> <laughs> A rare delicacy. Not for everybody though. Um, but yeah, so you sit there, everybody's got some nice cooked deer. Um, and yeah, do you discuss the uh, like the approach where you saw just gonna rock up this woman's house and just start rattling on the outside of it, or? What's the I think we should come in different angles to make sure that she doesn't have any traps set. We all go in at different angles. We're probably more likely to set off those traps. Also, she's a scary <laughs> old woman <laughs> who lives in the forest uh, without any worry. What about if we take a little bit of time and we scout the area around the house before we actually go up mm. and just clear out any traps if we find any or take a bit of time just looking and watching it seeing how she works, and then moving in? Or do you just want to just uh, get in position and then move in? My knowledge of yeah, this woman is... I think it would be a good idea to scout the area, but then once we've scouted it, I think it would be best if we all found a place to hide and then where she couldn't see us and then sent giver ahead because if she knows him from the past she would trust him more it's reasonable yeah whereas we might scare her off if we go in as a group mm -hmm. so if we send him in just People... to get her state of mind and maybe gain her trust and she would maybe tell him more than she would tell us mm -hmm. possibly possibly so Giver, who would you take with you? I think Mirthen might be a bit of a risk since she'll instantly know he is with uh, Ganzel. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about me as a hmm? as a magic druid wood elf? Yeah, I mean, like, Excellent. technically you're a wild woman, right? Technically as well. Yeah, yeah. So. exactly. Mm -hmm. Takes one. So right. <laughs> just, I thought I could smell something. Just the kitchen. It's just those draconic senses, isn't it? <laughs> the nostrils are good. Um, I've got, um, I've got perception. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, quite, I've got really good perception and insight. So I'm wondering if, if those would be able to help. Mm -hmm. Um. Going to see if, if the shit's going to go down. Okay, give me two seconds. Do I go along and try a bit of deception? No, we don't want to go right or persuasion. No. I'm not trying to... Deceive her. No, well, yeah, but I might be able to charm her a bit. I think... I, I think we want to be as nice as possible to the old dear. Yeah? No, that's fine. Anyone else think that they might... Right, that could help this, and 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 Barry. No, uh, as I say, I think if we send too many people, and it might spook her. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm going to give you a couple of things about the the game just now. So if we pause the RP just now, which has been really good. There's been some really good suggestions. I like how Angela's managed to justify sacrificing Barry this early. I like it. Yes. I am. Um, it's very good. <laughs> well done. It's all completely justifiable as well, and I love it. Um, but. Every day on your character sheets at the top left, there is an inspiration box, right? Mm -hmm. And it should have a little dragon in it. Yeah. Right, so if you click the dragon, it vanishes, so make sure the dragon's there, right? Um, that is like a yes-no condition in terms of that. It just It's a little marker to say you've got inspiration or you don't. It's something I'll do 
something with, right? And you can spend it as a player on yourself or someone else when they need to make a dice roll, okay? So for example, for the cooking roll, if Batch was like, mm, I really need this to be good, I'll spend my inspiration on this, you can then untick the dragon, right? And then tick the advantage toggle and it will roll twice for you. Okay. Like what Guyver did accidentally with that, so, oh, sorry, what he did deliberately, sorry, with that uh, survival roll, the 21 <laughs> and 18, right? Because he's got that um, tick that rolls twice and you take the better of the two results. Um, okay. So you get like a one-off use. So I gave everybody that to start with for free um, because this game is difficult enough at the start. So it can be used on attack rolls. It can be used on somebody else's attack rolls. It can be used on the saving throws if you're like dying or something. Um, so once it's used, it's gone until it's reissued. You cannot have multiple instances of it. Um, but don't feel you need to hoard it, right? I haven't decided how I'm awarding it out yet, um, because there are no rules for it and it's really annoying. Um, but I'll see what I can do to make sure you can earn it in different ways, right? Because it is a really fun thing to be able to do. It's like, cool, I like what you're up to there. Like, for example, um, Jill could think Barry's idea is so good. She's like, I want you to succeed this, have inspiration to do this. It also means yeah. that if I've told you that because of the situation you've got disadvantage on a dice roll, you can spend your inspiration to make it normal, to cancel out the disadvantage as well. Okay? So it's all it's worth knowing that too. Okay, okay. Okay. And at any point you can say, before I roll, could I spend my inspiration on this? And it's probably gonna be a yes, assuming you have inspiration, right? There's gonna be very little situations where I say no. I might suggest it's not worth it depending on the type of roll that you're doing. And in which case you might want to save it for something more important. But again, it's up to you how you spend it and who on. Um it doesn't stack, so it's not like you could all gift like four yeah. of you couldn't gift like um Angela, it insures like a million times. It doesn't work that way. You only ever get one source of inspiration and one source of, uh, sorry, one source of advantage and disadvantage. It never stacks. Um, so the best that can happen is if you've got 20 things saying disadvantage and 100 things saying advantage, the roll's still in normal roll, regardless, because there's at least one of each. So um, just so you just know that anytime you're worried or particularly want something to succeed, if you have that, feel free to use it. Um, you need to say you're using it before you see your dice rolls. You can't have rolled the cooking and go, oh, it's only a 13, can I roll again? You don't get to do that. You need to decide to spend it up front because the risk is you might roll two ones anyway, right? So it does need to be stated. The risk is up front. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. Good, perfect, excellent. I... Right, another thing. Stu, do you want to tell them why you sneaking or trying to hide is a bad idea? By me sneaking or trying to hide is a bad idea. Uh, I am very noisy because <laughs> uh, if he's yeah. a hummer. Yeah. His chink uh, chink 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 chink. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So from nearby, it'll be yeah. It's very bad. Probably within a hundred feet, they would. <laughs> within a reasonable perception check, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, scale mail gives him a better armor class, so he's harder to hit, but. It's because of the, the metal, rubbing off the metal, it's a disadvantage on stealth checks. So if he was trying to do sneaky things, he uh, has to roll twice and take the worst result. And also, stealth is also dexterity as well. My dexterity is rubbish as well, so I've got double rubbish on yeah. sneaky. <laughs> he is not a dexy yeah. dwarf. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, his magic's good, so there's that, right? Um, yeah, it's not good yet. We'll be at about ten levels. This doesn't need to be that tall. Yeah, yeah it really does. <laughs> um, but yeah, so see if he's doing like a hide check to actually hide, he still has disadvantage in that because it's stealth based. Because um, stealth isn't just about hiding behind a tree; it's also about remaining hidden, as well as finding a good hiding spot. So, I. Because you're a dwarf and stealth is not a a good mix. But that's something that your characters would understand about him just by listening to him having made the journey as far as he has so far. Um so I, I won't make you say worry about kinda of like learning this after the fact. Um I see Jill's drawn our character again. Oh, just delete that. Um 
That right. was an accident. That's okay. Oh, yeah. I assumed as well. That's okay. I just noticed to be doodle. Um, <laughs> now, what's the plan? Then, yeah, tell me. Tell me the plan. By that, I mean tell each other the planning character and let's see what the actual plan is, the one you all agree on. So, so I like the idea um, of putting Ranger through. He's a familiar face. You met her. You can idea from the start. Who else are we saying goes with? Are we are we happy with the druids? I'm happy with the druid, but yeah, I would need to stay miles away. Uh, <laughs> Plenty of distance away. <laughs> okay. So I'll, invite, I'll get you back you want, in the castle. <laughs> yeah. Or if you want, I could be the warning to the old lady so she's not spooked when you arrive. Because, yeah, she'll wear the chunk, chunk, chunk. Me walking up from ages, uh, miles away. And think that the army's after her. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, he doesn't wear anything I don't believe in a way that just says, I work for Grand Elf, right? It's not like a, if somebody stared at him, they would know straight away. He does look kind of magic as fuck though given that you've picked this guy yeah aye I don't have the crown on by the way but ostentatious but other than that yes. also you've probably been jumped by bandits by now right yeah. like this <laughs> um, the beard jeweler is quite nice actually though I didn't notice that we went the art is just nice it's a, it's a nice piece of art yeah. that you've all picked good art to be honest um, so yeah uh, right so plan is what so we're sending the ranger because of the familiarity, that makes sense, right? So, Giver is an auto take to the front door. Um, I think the next choice is dwarf or druid, right? What's the pros and cons? I guess. I think the druid's a good idea, perception, and also yeah, you're also the type of character we're looking for. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. There are probably Range and Druid. Not bad. Also very easy to find together as well, you'd expect, so yeah. What about everybody else? What's the thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a good start. I think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. Barry, what's your investigation like? Uh, investigation shouldn't matter unless he's actually looking at stuff specific. Do you want to like, snip around though, right? For clues, so yeah, it would be things like investigate. Well, it's not just that. I'm thinking, like, say Druid, um, Baction, uh, Giver, make it in. And she's not forthcoming, but she's chatty. We might need a good investigation level, perception, insight, or something like that, that, that just takes I've advantage of the... perception and insight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we need an investigation. Yeah, I've got investigation at... Two with a tick in the box. Right, I think okay. that while goes to a talking to her and gaining information that myself and Drew could be doing the investigation in the surrounding areas to see if we can find anything out because yeah. she'll be distracted to what we can go to. Yeah, like, you know, send those two in to be like the distraction, as you say, yeah, mm -hmm. and then have you guys like snoop about. Yeah, it's not yeah, uh, and that unreasonable. Way, that way as well, if there is any trouble, then we'll be close by to help them out. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. And then the dwarf just stays put and hopefully doesn't make too much noise. Um, exactly. Does that sound like a good plan then for everybody? I'm happy. Do mm -hmm. okay. you like it? Good, good. So yeah, I think he's, um, he's obviously decide on who oh. who, who takes... Yeah? Can I ask? Mm -hmm. um, what, are we, what are we going to tell her we're there for? Mm. What's our plan when we go in? I would be Ranger. fairly like, honest, you know. Say we I are just. Been, I I think we should be honest as well. Just go in and say, um, we've been hired to find missing children that have went missing in this area. Do you know anything about it? And if she asks us who's hired us, what do we say? The townsfolk. Mm. The spots for hire. It's... Do we want to die or do we want to just be quite vague about it and just say we can't, it's client privilege yeah. kind of thing? I would say that is nicely vague about it, saying yeah. the townsfolk. That's it, get on her ass. <laughs> it's not wrong, it isn't deception. It's not right? wrong actually, yeah, he's, he's part yeah, of the townsfolk. There's no lie, there's nothing. 
Okay, yeah, that sounds it. that sounds like a plan. Okay, yeah, that's not a bad plan either. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's obviously he'll decide on like a watch order for who stays up when and who takes the last watch, etc. And then he's all eventually like sleep. Right. There's no events that happen through the night to worry about on this yeah. day. Um, <laughs> and um, I can't say I'll be that kind at every session. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I can say that. Definitely not. Um, the world's a dangerous place too, okay? Um, dreams are the worst. Dreams are the worst, to be honest. Try not to get into <laughs> anybody else's dreams. They're really dangerous. Uh, but yeah, so you... You all get up in the morning, you pack up your camp, or do you leave it put, or like, how uh, eco-friendly are you as a group? I would say very eco-friendly. Very eco-friendly. Yeah. And a ranger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The truth and ranger alone would be, I might not be as bothered, but yeah, I would <laughs> kind of hate it. <laughs> Still picking at the bones of the, the deer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Breakfast, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, so he's like, dismissed with your campsite and whatnot, and a uh, you start to head off uh, down the, the woods a bit and can I get some perception checks in a second, right? So there's another thing you can do. Here's another mechanics conversation. If it makes sense that two people can work on the same thing, right? You pick one person to take the lead and they get to roll with advantage and that counts as someone having helped them, right? So for example, if somebody wanted to pull a door open, you'd be rolling athletics, but if somebody gave you a hand, because there's enough room for both of these to get a grip and pull it, that first person can then roll with advantage, right? And, you know, the scene is that you are both pulling it open together, right? So that's something you can do. There is some times where I just don't think it makes sense that you could both work on a thing together, such as both looking at something off in the distance, right? I feel like it's two individual roles but I don't mind that more than one person could do that because that does make sense, right? Um, mm-hmm. It also is, there's a thing about um, like repeating skill checks. The skill check isn't necessarily just this was my first attempt, it is that was your attempt at doing that thing. It doesn't mean to say that you would ever, you can't just like roll infinitely after like so many turns. You have done it, you have tried, that was your level of ability to do Searching the Searching treasure, for example, yeah, that's yeah. it done. Or like yeah. trying to like pick a lock as well, like you have attempted to pick the lock, the lock defeated you, right? You'll need some other way, like a big hammer to smash the lock, or somebody else could have a go at it, but you haven't managed it. It isn't something you can just hopefully spam the skill button and get past. Um, but in saying that, can every day just roll perception for me, just normally? So make sure you're set to normal, not advantage or disadvantage, and just hit perception on your character sheet. On the far left, it's not... Uh... <laughs> you're going to be the last one there, Stuart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are all, they're on the ball. Typical. Um, no, there we go. You weren't last. You got, you got the best one. Actually, um, you got twice the bike. Nope, but it's yeah, the first one's cooking. That's... Nope, it's just the one. Um, so, uh, surprisingly the ranger doesn't get this, so I'm assuming that maybe Guyver was in the middle of talking, um, maybe going over the plan once more, or maybe saying, like, just reminiscing about the last time he was in this area, um, hence why he doesn't instantly hear this. Murdrin, obviously you've zoned out of whatever he was talking about, because you immediately hear this. But you hear snarling, and tearing and heavy breathing and then eventually like uh, Dewey and Collins Elk used like hear this as well and eventually back you hear this so Guyver you see everybody else like kind of stop paying attention to you and like stand still and like as if they've heard something and you haven't let's say the difficulty for this the DC the difficulty check or challenge just whatever DC was 10 for this, right? Which is why Guyver doesn't know what everybody else is listening to. So how does everybody react to that? There's something nearby. Don't know if it's a stalker or a wild animal, but it's something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I say, the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I 
So this is I mostly see. what you hear first as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you say? There is something snarling nearby. No, not you, uh, to. It was um, Alan, because he went to say something and then didn't. Oh, no, no. I was, I was saying to Giver, shh. Ah, I, I just I never got that, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you send someone to go scout ahead a little bit to find out what it is, or do you all shuffle forward a bit? Um, what's the plan? Or I can play music. <laughs> <laughs> or you play music. A perfectly barred thing to do. It, it will do one of two things. It yeah. will either pacify the snarling and they'll bugger off. Or get us all killed. Or it'll irritate the shite out of them and they'll come out. <laughs> to be honest, walking in the woods is a good idea to play music because it would scare away most of the animals, especially if you're using the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> and most people. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm easy, Ozzy, whatever we want to do. Well, yeah. I have... I've got a, I've got a really good as some form of animal, animal I've got really good animal handling. It sounds like you volunteered to scout ahead. That's what I think happened. <laughs> okay. Like so. Or you in elf vision? Yep. Are you going to oh. go and try and sneak ahead, or do you not care about being stealthy about this? Um, I'm not caring about being stealthy about this. Do we want someone to go with you because just in case? I am at one with the earth. Oh God! <laughs> okay. Um, it's like we got ourselves a tree. Hugger. Well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, right. Well, hold on, I eat a bag of kale. Wrap that. <laughs> Jelly, your roots are showing. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. <laughs> oh God! Take a hundred damage. Um, <laughs> so, if that's the case, then I will move Jill alone. To this other page. It's a whole other page. Which, by the way, is usually bad news. <laughs> Just mm. <laughs> drop that. Don't make games too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> so, Jill, you you spot these these things. What things? Things. Those things. Maybe yeah. zoom out or something like that, or move the screen. Quietly, you oh, can do it. Okay. Shush. Right, okay. So you spot them, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't seem to be paying you any attention. They seem to be eating something on the ground, and they all seem to be, like, tentatively, like, trying to get in at it. Um, what is a... Uh, do you want to go back to the group, or... Uh, if they're not paying me any attention... Doesn't seem like they've noticed you yet. Then I would go back to the group and explain to them what I saw. Right, Teal. Uh, give me a stealth check to see how well you get back to the group to see if you make any noises. Oh, you sounded so smug there as if I'm going to like... Don't, honestly, I have, <laughs> imagine I have no tone because I pretty much don't, so don't worry about it. Let's... It's like, do you know how clumsy I am? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, your stats don't affect your character's stats, so. <laughs> you trip over 45 branches. <laughs> you fall on the bagpipes. Like, for some reason, he. <laughs> I fall on the bagpipes. Do he gave you them for some reason for good luck? Nobody knows why. <laughs> No, there we go. That's a fourteen. That's that's good enough. You, you get to. S so I'm hoping that rolls. It did. It's a fourteen it you got. Um, so you you did good enough for them to not notice you. What does it need to be over? So Ten? you wouldn't necessarily know that. I wouldn't right? know that. Really. So there's varying difficulties. Um, oh. Most simple tasks will be a difficulty of ten. Right. So that's like a like a base level. If it's less than ten, I'm unlikely to ask you to roll for it. Put it that way. Um, okay. Because I just feel like you'd be able to do it. What's like? There's no exciting downside to it. Whereas if you failed this, you can imagine why something else would have been different in the scene, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why it's usually only things that have an interesting kind of downside, or if it's a important okay. enough reason. But yeah, so 
you manage to get away and you don't think like they've noticed you or like their their attention's kind of been pulled elsewhere and you kind of get back to the group. Yeah. yeah. So what do you see? So I saw some snarling black wolves, some mm-hmm. big ass black wolves that were very, very hungry and uh, enjoying their grub. Well, there's no deer left, I can guarantee you that. So. <laughs> I think I think they had Bambi's mum. You couldn't have um, said that was something. the original Disney story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was some mythical carnivorous chickens. No, it wasn't, I'm afraid. It was Moon big chickens. Black. <laughs> yes, chickens everywhere. <laughs> moon otherwise, everywhere. moon Where? chickens, otherwise known as wolves. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, there was it was big black wolves, mm-hmm. so lovely racist. looking, lovely looking coats, really nice and shiny. What are you trying to hint at here? They were getting a lot of nourishment from the food. Okay. So and possibly yeah. a bitch in your coat for hey. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just been down to next. Come to Minneapolis, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh dear. Oh dear. So no- anywhere. Um, um, oh, that's... No, they were really lovely. Um, lovely <laughs> wolves, sat down, had a tea. Um, but they were having their grub. Yep. So they didn't... I'm curious, but uh, I'll say in game. It, it, Baksh, would your animal handling be able to make them ignore us? Do you think? Oh, I don't know because they were big ass wolves. Um, but I would like to think about one with the spirit animals and a wolf as a spirit animal. So I would, I would. It is a woodland animal. You're a wood elf. I know, but it's also. Do you not think that you would be able to deal with these? I try. So I'll re-describe the scene. A little bit for you, okay? Yeah, Batch. we haven't seen it. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is this is that's purely for Batch, right? They all seem to be like eager to fight their way in to get food. <laughs> so these all seemed, you know, excited and agitated, if you will. I am, um, okay. and there were several Freedom. of them. Okay. So yeah, there's there's that angle to go with, right? Um, it means that. Would you approach, even if you knew you were good with animals, yeah. something that's, yeah, this is the type of stuff I'm like, I think your character would understand that, right? Um, I get you. Yeah. No. Cool. I didn't, I didn't realise the word. The yeah, I just wanted to re kind of like address that because I don't want you to walk into a situation ill prepared that way when it's something that you would have seen. Yeah. So here's, here's just a wee quick aside question then. See if that happens again. If I go somewhere and you show me a picture. Am I allowed to ask you questions yeah, about that? 100%, yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, yep. Really. Ask yeah, for I all detail. Yeah, no, that's fine. I don't mind. Yeah. I am. Um... If we act on it, it's meta gaming. That's yeah. against the rules. So yeah. Ah right. Okay. Got you. Got you. That's right. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Then. No, that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. Don't worry. Feel I'm free. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, that should have done very well. Mm-hmm. I yeah. would. So I wouldn't actually anything. go anywhere near them um, because they are hungry, and. Yeah, they're no. big black wolves. Any now, of them have can openers. Now for the bad news <laughs> for um, <laughs> the bad news okay. that Giver will have to deliver is that that's the only way to get to Osmox without it taking many more days. Oh. It's not to say the rest of the forest isn't is dangerous, right? We don't have days, so probably just need to go in and. Uh, well, how about I can try my animal handling, and if my animal handling mm-hmm. doesn't work, then we just need to be prepared to defend ourselves. Or we could ask Ranger, is there an alternative route around? Well, that's what they're just saying, that um, it's going to take a good few days. How many days, Ranger? What's the... ETA. Many. Depending on what <laughs> else you come up against, right? Because what if you go so <laughs> far and you come against something else? That you want to avoid. Exactly. If we go straight through the wolves, we can uh, play Duran Duran on the bagpipes. Sweet. <laughs> I'm up for that. 
Basically, or, or some Phil Collins. <laughs> well, that's going to be like Will. Like, Maybe, how about like, try Genesis? How about we try then? Well, that's just cruel. Animal, mm. animal, magic, my animal handling. Then, and if that doesn't work, then we go into defense and defense mode. We're not going into defense how mode. How far have how far have we came from the camp? How far away are we from where we were camping? You're about an hour away. By the way, was the song you were thinking of Hungry Like a Wolf? Hungry okay, Like a Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that in brother. the chat, yeah. It, it, or yeah, not in the yeah, chat, yeah, just in, yeah, like yeah. with those words, not the chat. With yeah. these words. <laughs> oh dear. If we um, go straight through them, it'll take another two hours to get to her. But if we take a detour, it'll take six hours. Nope, not at all. Days, None of that. Sorry, I did say. You're only about, so you're about an hour away from camp, and you're about probably less than an hour away from Osmox, um, going can through this Giver, pass. Can Giver hunt any carcass that's lying about, or any other animal that we could sacrifice to distract the wolves that they've not came across? Ooh, good show. If so they're hungry, we could distract them by offering up another animal for them to eat, and then we can... Get away from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could definitely try that. Yeah, you could. Uh, might take obviously a bit of time because it's uh, hunting isn't yeah. like a, I automatically just generate dead animals to feed people, but it is like going off, mm -hmm. you know, for. Yeah, but it would be quicker time. than taking the diversion. I mean, yeah. Do we have any more Bambi left? No. That's, that's why it. I asked how far we were away from camp, so we could get the carcass to give them to feed on. No, remember, you were very um, economic. Remember. Yeah, but we would know how we had disposed of the carcass and where it was. Yep, but what I mean is you obviously wouldn't have left anything behind in terms mm -hmm. of, like, you would have ate as much of it as you could, out of respect for the animal, you know? Have we maybe took some of Bambi with us? Nope. It's a packed lunch. <laughs> okay, a doggy bag, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um... Uh, no, because then we have to get into upwind or downwind, and uh, the fact that you all smell of food at that point, right? Um, and then wolf senses, and then potentially a whole a whole bag of fish, you know. So, How many wolves are there? I think we do this side of the forest a favour, just kill the wolves. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. How many wolves are there? I couldn't see how many. Phew. How many were there? Did you honestly not see how many there were, though? I didn't see how many there were. Okay. I mean, I think from where you were, you could see at least three. At least. Right. I'd say we killed them. Yeah. Well, why don't we try, Matt? There's nothing... What's, is there any... Ha me try animal handling first, and if that doesn't work, then... So yeah, I'll, I'll talk you through the, the mechanics of that then, right? So, if he's all approached to be within range, right, uh, you can't do it stealthily, so the wolves will notice, because you've got, like, a group of people that, in general, if he's tried to stealth as a group, you have to take the lowest result, right? And that would be your dwarf friend. So, sneaking, not that big a deal, but they might still be busy eating, right? So you could probably walk up, and then... As I said, when you roll initiative to get into like some kind of turn order, you you could use your action to see how animal handling went, right? But if you did that, it would then be the turn order if it went badly, right? Which means you'd have taken your turn to do that. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, but besides that, yeah, you don't really lose anything by trying it if it's the first thing you do. It's if everybody tried to do like a skill check on their first turn, you might all just get mauled by wolves. If it went badly, assuming. But who's to say that wasn't the ballad of these adventurers, right? Mauled by wolves. What do you think? I say we attack. I'll say we attack as well, to be honest. Def 
this one. What about uh, Colin Delt C can do he? He is um, an... <laughs> that? I think we attack. Okay. I think we attack because otherwise we're just wasting time. Okay. Uh, majority rules. Seems to, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. See, before we do go into a fight, before you move us at all, we should all be sure about our spells set up correctly. Yeah, we were. Unless right, you are. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I asked that right at the start and we were covered and everything was fine, right? Everything's yeah. good? Yeah. yeah. Um, like, that. that is a point, though. I'll bring that up just now. So, Jill, since it affects Jill and Stu. But I'm going to assume Stu isn't changing his because he would have said so after his long rest. Um, mm -hmm. So when you do I a long rest as a have, dude... Then have my remembered ones ticked ah. made up so you don't know what ones those are. I do not know, but you should probably do that. Okay. Shield magic, so I did it before the beginning. I, f I figured that would that would yeah. be yeah, like a standard boat. layout, right? Um, which boat would be an ironic one to take. <laughs> So, see, as a druid, and this is why you want access to that player's handbook that I linked for everybody, right? Um, oh. As a druid, every, anytime you take a long rest, which is the big eight hour rest to get your stuff back, you can change your spell list out to different spells, depending on what situation you think you're going to get into. Okay. Oh, you tell us that? Uh huh. So, that's something to keep in mind. You should be fine with the setup we gave you for obviously character gen, but anytime you take a long rest going forward if you're looking to change spells out, make sure you've done your homework, because I don't want to, for example, if this was the session where you're like, cool, let me go change my spells out, I don't want to wait 20 minutes for everybody else to wait for you to do that, so mm -hmm. have like a wee read through like some druid spells when you get a chance and think, right, cool, these are the ones that would be good for like this type of situation or that situation. Um, okay. And what we can do is we'll add the ones you like into your character list and we'll just tick the ones that you end up preparing each day because you'll eventually have all the druid spells. So okay. it's a bit of a, a, a tricky one. But yeah, like you druids get like a choice of pretty much any druid spell, which is nice. Um, and you can change the list that you know per day. And if everybody remembers, you only get your spell slots Per day. So if you click on your spells tab for me, Bex, mm -hmm. if you click on that, that'll take you to the spells page. And on there, you've got spell slots like I am um, available to you. Um, it should probably be two, I think, is what you'll have for your first level spells. Just let me know when you're looking at that. It's on your. Right, got it. Got it? Yep. So you've got. Acid splash and all that. Is that right? It's not what I'm looking at. That that's in the spells list, yes. So that is in the druid spells list, but I mean on your actual character sheet. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to the computer now just to see. Right. Okay. Yeah, I yep. can see them now. Yep. I, I, for some reason, I can't really see them quite easily on my um that's on okay. my tab. So, right. but I. On that, I was wondering what Alan was looking at. So that's not ah, right. Okay. So this is like your spells page. Okay. So can you see how you've yeah. got like level zero is cantrips, yeah, so they don't yeah. count really as spells. Okay. Uh huh. Because that's just magic you can use as often as you like because it doesn't exhaust. Like there's no limit per day. Okay. Um, they all have like I'm gonna open up produce flame. Now casting mm -hmm. time one action. Right, and we'll talk about what you can do on a turn, etc. Um, but that's like the cost of that. Down below you've got where the zero is, it's a one now, and this is your first level spell. So those numbers and the weird kind of diamond shaped things, that's the level of magic it is, okay? And it says slots total is two, mm -hmm. okay? And slots remaining, it says zero, but I'm going to quickly change it to two for you, because it is okay. two, right? And you track it there. So if you used one of these spells, you'd mark off a use of your slots remaining. And they get renewed after every long rest. So I can. So I'm going to actually tell the team then that one of the spells I can cast is to speak with animals. 
So rather than just going straight in for the slaughter, do you want me to use my um my spell to speak with the animals and to so, speak with the wolves? So before we go any further than that, that's a good question to pause just now. But see how it's got an R at the end of it? Speak with animals, oh. and there's a little R. Uh-huh. Okay, that means it can also be done as a ritual, right? Which right. means... If I open this up, oh. casting time says one action, but if you add 10 minutes to any casting time that has a ritual tag next to it, you don't spend the spell slot. So if you cast that spell, took 10 minutes to do it instead of the, the one action, you could then have 10 minutes worth of speaking with animals without wasting a spell slot, which you might need in a fight. Uh, good idea. But you can That's only do that. You can only do that with spells that have the ritual tag. Well, here's a here's a suggestion then. So I, if I can actually speak to the animals for the ten minutes. Well, you need ten uh, minutes to cast a spell. Then you could go and oh, you've ten got minutes. ten minutes because that's how long the spell lasts for as well. Okay. Yep. So if I well, they're munching on food just now anyway. So they're they're munching away. So I would hope that I would have the ten minutes. For them to eat, it's a risk, but if I can speak to the animals, not only can I just explain to them that we're not there to do them any harm and that we're just making our way our way through, I can also ask them if they've seen any of the children go missing. Like they're in the woods, so have they have they seen anything that's went on? Have they seen the kids get snatched by anyone? You could, but there's another way you could take it. You could tell the wolves there's very tasty meat away the other direction from us. That might be a better way to talk to wild wolves. But but is would that be the case even with my character though, with, with who I am? Well, if that, I'm... that's only you can answer that one, right? Like that's like that kind of question is like, what would Bax do? Because yeah. it's fine, like Stuart suggesting that, but again, it's up to you to decide what yeah. you would do. Morally. So yeah, sorry, morally, you're still saving the wolves' lives. Yeah, it's it's not. I'm not not. I'm I'm not thinking about that from a, a moral stance point. I'm I'm more thinking of it as a, um, you know, if I can speak to them, um, and ex, you know, if if I can explain to them that we're not there to do harm, blah blah blah. And get information from them. Would that not be better than just going there? Because if I say to them, "There's food over there a mile away," they could turn around and say, "Well, your food. I can just eat you." I will also say that they are um, wolves and not necessarily um, articulated conversationalists. I will give you that much up front as well. I imagine you spoke to animals in the past, given that this is a spell you have. So. They're not likely to be able to speak to you like a human, right? We won't be discussing Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you could definitely like, you could converse does, with them. It does say that at a minimum, but at a minimum, beasts can give you information about nearby locations and monsters, including what they can perceive or have perceived within the past day. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Feel free. If, yeah. if I can then speak to them and say, look, have you seen any children being snatched? Where from? Did the witch do it? And they go, what's a witch? <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Did you Aye, know? but I know. I'm just, I don't want you to be uh, too disappointed moment. with uh, <laughs> the expectations of what a witch aye, knows. Aye, yeah. mm-hmm. But it's fine. Yeah, I think it's a very good plan, uh, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it is definitely better than trying animal handling if you can magically actually be understood by wolves. That is definitely a better standing. Um, yeah. Would it be worthy of maybe using your inspiration for this? Well, you don't need to roll to cast the spell. Oh, okay. But you might want to save your inspiration if there's a roll while conversing with the wolves, right? But, right. That's my check or something like that. But or that, whatever it is. obviously, but, yeah. you'll know when I'm asking for a check because I'll ask for it, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, okay. But for example, that doesn't have a attack roll or anything, so it it just it would normally cost the spell slot, but because it's a ritual, she can just take an extra ten minutes. Like right, if the okay. spell cost 
an hour to cast while using a spell slot. It would be an hour and ten minutes if it was a ritual. So it's only an action, like, on your turn you get, like, a round of combat lasts six seconds, right? So take from that what you will. Uh, so what's the plan then? Are we going to go for attack them? What does or... Keep in mind, you could just say to them, listen, I can actually speak to these people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily always a democracy. You could just say, give me ten minutes and I'll see what I can do before we just kill them. You could do something as simple as that. It doesn't necessarily always need to be, let's vote on what everybody does. It could just be, let me try this and if it doesn't work, let's murder them. Right? It, it could be something as simple as that. But you you decide how you want to like, present that to the group. Okay. I would like to pose a question to the ranger and the druid. What do, we, what do you two know of black wolves? Which mean? Well, have you had any experience? And if so, what was the kind of outcome of it? Because this in itself might help with whether speaking to black wolves will be of benefit or whether it's maybe a, a, a wasted 10 minutes. Well, I know they're not tasty, but they're they far <laughs> quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> they don't taste very well, but they don't. their pelts are really... Um, you get a lot of coin for the pelts. <laughs> well, it's like, imagine asking a wild dog a question. You're not going to get of it. Um, so, um, I have spoken with them in the past. And? Um, and gained some insight into locations. Um, but it can be a bit of a... It's not a... It's not a, a that's the word I'm looking for. Guaranteed. It's a detailed answer that I'm going to get. That's fine. So, so just, can you uh, wait, uh, just wait 10 minutes then, just to see if I can sure. do a wee spell, um, a wee ritual, um, and see if I can just ask these ask these wolves a wee, que a wee couple of questions? So I give that a go then? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Angela? Yeah, if you want. Right. There you go. Ten minutes might save you some time. Yeah. No longer. Yeah. I'll shut the door. So, what you can do, just for the sake of having this, like, logged, right? See if you just, and I'll do it for you just now. You would just Thanks. click the text that says speak with animals in the spell list. I'll click it, and that'll pop it into the chat there. Okay? Okay. I'm going to move you back to your core page. If you look on the core page, see in the middle box, which is above your inventory, it says attacks and spellcasting. Any spell that has a rolling component to it, like I'll do mm -hmm. produce flame next, right? So I'll click on that. Do it from that page, because then it will give you your 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 roll. Okay, okay. And it'll put it in the chat. Right. Okay. Got you. But speak with animals doesn't need you to roll a d20. Put it that way, which is why there's no dice roll attached to speak with animals. The cost of it's either the spell slot or the the time it takes. So you don't mark off any spell slots used because you didn't use any to do it as a ritual, which is nice. Um, something that like wizards and druids get access to, which is really nice, is ritual casting. Um, also to show that off, let's go back to core page and scroll down, and I'll expand it on your. I'll get see on your red text box at the bottom right. And I'll pop it into chat as well. That's why you can do this. I think the bard actually has ritual casting as well. I think bards, wizards, and uh, druids. I'm pretty sure clerics probably get it as well. Oh, survival. You know, right. Uh -huh. So the ritual casting in the red text. So you've got armor proficiency, druidic, ritual casting, fey ancestry in the bottom right of your character sheet. Ah, uh, I see it. Yep, it's there. And I've popped it into the chat for everybody. I am um, just have a wee nosy. Okay, okay. And we've got Angela's Guild membership as well. <laughs> right, so I will 
close this off just now. So you take your 10 minutes, right? So the components to this spell are verbal, so you need to speak magical mumbo jumbo, and you need to wave your hands about to cast some sigils in the air. So can you describe what this looks like for everybody else? Watching you take 10 minutes to do this? Um, like how does your magic magic look? Um, it looks like I'm doing interpretive dance okay. um, in the form of um, wanting to be a tree. If you can imagine, I want to be a tree. And Alan's laughing because I'm actually doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's seen OA. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going into that realm. <laughs> um, yeah. Lots of arm waving and calling to the earth and yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. And uh, your spell takes hold after ten minutes of this visual spectacle, and uh, yeah. Did it work? Mhm. Mm yeah. Excellent. So I can go and speak to the wolves now. Am I? Still, can the guys still see me? Can can they? Will they be able to converse with me? Or do depends. I go on do you board? want them to get as close as you got? Um, or do you want them to stay back again? Because remember, you had to scout ahead to go see them. I would say no, aside from someone to protect you. I wouldn't take Merlin. He's gonna yeah. run around like a yeah, bag yeah, of pots and pans, gonna... and he's gonna ruin whatever rapport you're gonna get. Aye. And from the sounds of things, Angela is just gonna skin the fuckers <laughs> and make a wee coin off of it, which she'll never. Or a fetching I'm... cloak. <laughs> yeah, I guess a fetching look would be. I was thinking one of the dragonborn. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I'm I'm more tempted to go with the ranger because he's the ranger and not a musician. <laughs> not Mister Boom. Oh. Yeah. I can. <laughs> Savage bag blast and oh, savior. If if the ranger has already um killed them and ate them though, then he's got more experience able to have my back. Mm -hmm. Is that is that right with you, Ranger? I go for it. Right, so you uh, still want to like get closer to you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'll I'll go closer to the wolves with um my honor <laughs> at my back. Ten seconds. Oh, hello, noises. And uh, bam and bam. So you just move up, right? Mm. And then for the sake of this, I. I am in two places. Because the token is on two screens. So. You're looking uh, at the right. screen that obviously you can see, right? Mm-hmm. And it should be the one with the wolves. That should be where you're, you're looking. And okay. Barry, you should also have moved. Yeah. Cool. So you just, like, sneak up in the sense of by walking normally without any sneaking. And then, uh, yeah. And you see this as they're tucking into some food. Now, do you want to get closer? And uh, start chatting to them. So I can't see it. I'm zooming in and zooming out, and I can't see him. So Just if I move the do about. this, does that help? Oh, okay. So I'm looking over there. Okay. So you are there, yeah. Mhm. Mm and you can see this. Yep. Cool. So. You're a wood elf, right? So mm -hmm. that means you can move 35 feet, so that's six squares. So if you want to just let me know if you want to get closer and start having a wee chat, or do you want to shout from here, or how do you want to handle this? Oh. I'll um, stay a wee bit back, even if you go to the crossroads, and then just shout for there, they'll be able to hear you. Aye, uh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Please. So, you can move, like, anywhere along there, right? Yeah, probably the one 
with the rock one next to it. There, yeah. There, would you think, Paddy? Ranger? Yeah. Yeah. Aye. So, if I dump you there, right, you've yeah. moved. There we go. And uh, I'll get rid of the arrow, there we go. And for the folks at home, I guess I should probably move them so they can see what's happening because I keep forgetting that they also can't see unless I move that. Two wee seconds. I'll move the recording. Done. Mm, and then. That one. So, what's the. Uh, what is it you say to them in wolf? <laughs> so don't be alarmed. Um, don't be alarmed, wolves. Um, we're not, we're not your enemy. Um, I'm not here to harm you. Um, and anyway, uh, we just want to have safe passage um, to the other side where we're going. Um, and is that all right? Can I, and can I ask you a couple of questions? So I want to check if that's okay with them first. So um, you're going to roll a persuasion check, right? And it's mm -hmm. going to be at disadvantage because they are startled because of obviously what they were in the middle of, right? They are like hyper defensive because it's meal time. So okay. click on disadvantage and then persuade. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how well it goes for you. And the reason you get to do this is because you can actually speak the language they understand. No, you didn't mind. Go for it. Keep right, give it. So I click on... Disadvantage at the top, and then persuade. And we'll see how it goes. Persuasion. Yep, and we hope for high numbers on both sides. I've already, I've already got shit in persuasion. So is... That looks like that's Dewey's character sheet, is it not? Or is, oh, is that yours? Was that from that, yours? That was from me. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, forget that, it. it. It's a zero. Yeah, it makes more sense. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so you you say all this. Now to Barry, or should I say to Giver, I that all sounds like some random like howls and moaning and growling to you. <laughs> I, um, Please don't ask me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, now you have to go and cosplay a wolf, come back, do it all on the webcam for him. <laughs> no. And, uh, but the wolves, uh, like, they turn round and look, and look up, and you can see in their eyes as well, their eyes look all bloodshot. Um, Ooh. Like, really, really vivid bloodshot. Um, all their kind of snouts are all covered in blood. Um, like, parts of things hanging from them. Um, and they kind of look up. I, you notice as the wolves start to like pace, you know, a bit, just to be like, you know, a bit tentative with their, uh, their new discovery as they all turn around and look at you as you're howling at them. Uh, they look up and you can see clearly now they were eating from like a body oh. on the ground of like a person. <gasps> and you hear them reply with just one growling word, hunger. And uh, we'll take a wee 10 minute break here, I think, and cliff no. over that. And uh, no. dun, 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 dun. Loving no. it, loving it. Oh no, I don't <laughs> So yeah, I'll uh, stop the recording in two wee <laughs> seconds, but can everybody say goodbye for now? Goodbye. Goodbye Steve. for now. Goodbye. Oh.